Although the use of a PCA pump can seem challenging, with the proper steps, common errors related to PCA programming can be avoided. In this video, you will learn how to program a PCA pump and also review proper protocol per your institution or facility. I'm your nurse for today. I'm going to be giving you a PCA pump to help control your pain. Wait a minute, what is this PCA pump? A PCA means patient controlled pump or patient controlled analgesic pump. So it'll be running a continuous infusion. You'll be getting medication little by little for your pain. And if you feel like you need additional pain medication, you can push this button. When can I push it? And when the light lights up, you can push it. That means that you can have an additional dose. But we don't want you to overdose, so it'll lock you out after a certain amount of time. Can I push it for her? No, just the patient can do it. You understand that, baby? Yes. Prepare the medication that you will be infusing into the PCA. Take note of a fluorescent non-standard concentration sticker located on the syringe. Make sure to have a secondary nurse co-sign to verify the dose of the drug and the concentration. Turn on the infusion pump. Select whether this patient is new or old. Then select the unit you will be working in. Select the PCA pump channel. Confirm the time of day. Now select your syringe and place it into the compartment making sure that the syringe measurement and stickers are visible in the compartment. Lock it into place and close the compartment door. Put the key in to program. And confirm that the syringe is in place. Select the syringe. and select the drug that you will be infusing. Standard dose, and select if this is the right drug with the right dose within the syringe. Now this is time for the two RNs to verify the dose with the EMAR. While the primary nurse is reading off the dose on the infusion pump, have the secondary nurse select the medical record. The primary nurse will now make sure that the dose and the concentration matches what is written on the medical record. When the nurse is verifying the order of the dose, make sure to take note of the conversation bubble located on the medication record. Click on the bubble which will then take you into an overview of the dose, the type of basal rate, the delay, the hour dose limit, the loading dose or bolus. The amount is 50 milligrams and the volume is 50 milliliters. The concentration is one milligram to one milliliter. Okay, positive. And to read back to you, I have the volume of 50 milligrams, a dilutant of 50 milliliters for a total concentration of 1 milligram per milliliter. Confirmed. Select the dose that you will be infusing. Confirm the PCA dose, lockout interval, max limit, and continued dose. 
Make sure to put the key and lock the compartment door. Begin the infusion by pressing start. Now it is time to start with the end title CO2. Channel select on the end title CO2 compartment. Take the end of the tubing of the end title CO2, which will be yellow, turn the gray dial on the bottom, and twist the tubing into place. Take the oxygen tubing and secure it onto the oxygen. To ensure proper documentation, follow the guideline in order to write the end title CO2 in the appropriate bubble. When the nurse wants to review the history at the end of the shift, make sure to verify with the secondary nurse. To review the 24-hour end-of-shift report, channel select on your PCA pump. You will now go to the options and the main infusion pump. Go to patient history, press the zoom button until it goes to the 12-hour shift mark. Review the totals with a secondary nurse and confirm what you see. At the end, you will now press clear history on the bottom of the screen. Press yes to clear the history. Now exit. Review the end title CO2 by channel selecting on the end title CO2 compartment. Verify the end title CO2 on the screen. To look at the trend, press the trend button on the bottom screen. Review with the nurse to make sure that the values are verified. Now that we know how to operate the PCA infusion pump, it is important to talk about the different common errors in terms of dosing. There is the PCA dose, the basal continuous dose, the PCA dose with the continuous dose, and the loading dose. The loading dose is essential to control the patient's pain. If they are not loaded with the correct dose, the patient may try pressing the button continuous times with no control of their pain. They might end up even stopping the pain control because they don't think that it'll be working. I keep pressing this button over and over again, but I don't think it's giving me any pain medications. I'm still in pain. I'm very upset. I don't understand why I'm still in pain when I have this. See you. The bolus dose is what the patient can control when she presses the PCA button. Once the patient presses this dose, it will give a bolus in order to ensure pain control management. Oh, this hurts really, really bad. Once the bolus dose has been delivered, a preset amount of time must pass before another dose can be requested. This is known as the lockout period interval. The purpose of this time period is to allow time for the opioid to work. Although the lockout period does limit the amount of analgesia the patient can request, it should not be seen as a method of preventing overdose, as many nurses incorrectly assume. Oh, that felt so good. I'm going to press it again. One more. Maybe one more time. The last dose is the PCA dose with a continuous dose attached. This just ensures that the patient will get pain management even though they are not pressing the PCA bolus button. For example, if a patient is sleeping, they will still get a continuous set of pain management. 